Welcome to Fraud Friday. I'm Bob Coleman, and we're talking loan fraud, bankers, mm -hmm. public officials, and borrowers who got caught. Interesting story this week. Credit union official, Nada wow. Hay Hendricks. <laughs> she worked for the credit union. She was a loan officer. She had a loan authority of $10,000. And Delaney Sexton, what did she do? Well, recently she pleaded guilty to one count of conspiracy <laughs> to commit bank fraud because she took advantage of her position as a loan officer and assistant branch manager. And the way this scheme ran is that she worked with a co-conspirator, Mr. Glenroy Miller. Now, he has not pled guilty, so for his sake in this story, it's all alleged. Though, again, she already... But he was in cars. He was in jail when this happened, right? Yeah. He was. I mean, he they know where he is. The entire okay. time. Yeah, they <laughs> yes, know where that's he is. very okay. true. Go ahead. Well, and it's kind of hard to say he's not guilty, allegedly, because they have recorded calls of all of their conversations. Um, so that oh, never wow. really looks good in your defense. Lance, I think uh, Lance Sexton here there i think we could say i think we can go beyond the allegedly the uh yeah um I, I i think we can go out on the line on this one lance so for me the big question is it appeared delaney and correct me if i'm wrong that they were doing applications on other individuals who were in jail correct they were. Uh, Mr. Miller was collecting information from his fellow inmates, and he would communicate that over the calls. And then, you over know, the jail, the... over the jailhouse calls that are yes. recorded. <laughs> Every okay, single I just one want to clarify that. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I guess um, the big question that comes to play to me is, uh, you know, she had $10,000 in authority. Uh, she was doing loans for people who were in jail. Uh, uh, make, but does somebody in jail have a good credit report? Because I, I know a credit <laughs> I'm, union. I'm sorry for laughing. I shouldn't laugh, but Lancer, go ahead. I'm sorry. A, a well, credit union or a bank's going to have to run a credit report, irregardless of the size of the loan. So how'd they get by that? Well, I guess that was part of Orly. it. He was telling them that um, he was going to help repair their credit histories with oh, these loans. Oh, oh, yeah. Full service here. Full service. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> So that's uh, that also was a theme that happened in PPP. There were quite a number of individuals that got PPP loans who were incarcerated. This so was very extensive. I like this last comment, which was that they recruited individuals to impersonate the jail, the borrowers, so the security camera footage would show that Hendrix met with borrowers and verified their identities. Lance, you work for a financial institution um, Bank Security Act, and we have a lot of uh, uh, um, guidance on how to verify individuals. Getting their picture off the security camera, I don't know if that's a best practice, Lance. Well, that's that's pretty interesting that uh, Ms. Hendricks went to the, the length to find individuals to come in and sit in her office as if she was interviewing them for a loan, because in a bank location, virtually 100% of everything is on camera. I'll never forget, guys, during COVID, I worked at a bank. And, uh, of course, it was during the period where you were required to wear a mask. And I was working feverishly, and I had to run and use the bathroom. And I didn't put my mask on. And you were by yourself, right? No, no, there were others in the bank. Oh, okay, okay. But I did not put my mask on when going to the bathroom. And, and I, you know, the bathroom was just right down the hall from my office. There was nobody between me and the bathroom. So I just pop out and run to the bathroom. And five minutes later, I get a call from HR saying, we saw you not wearing a mask going to the bathroom. So, uh, I, you know, it's pretty interesting that they had people coming in per perpetrating as if they were a borrower. I'm wondering continue how they worked with your, them into with that. Your timeline, Delaney. Go ahead. Um, so it originally started in 2019. Miller was actually the first person who received a loan. Um, he or she helped him by opening a bank account while he was incarcerated. They said that he was living in Boston and working as a sanitation worker. Um, and they wanted to get a $3,000 loan. And they had said he purportedly hand signed it. Of course, he was incarcerated. You can't really hand sign loan document or loan documents in jail. 
But um, a few years later, back in 2021, he ended up coming again for a second loan. Um, part of it was used to actually pay off the original loan. The second loan was 4000 They used 990 to pay off the first loan. And then Hendrix received 10% herself. And after the second time, it seems like that's when the floodgates opened and all of these other incarcerated individuals started their involvement in the scheme. There's so many things that strikes me on this, and one of them is the dollar amounts we're talking about. Delaney, you have talked about multi-million dollar fraud, PPP loan fraud, um, huge numbers. And here we have a woman who not only was she pled guilty, so she no longer has a financial services career, which Lance pays a nice salary. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and she's ruined that, and she, and she will get some jail time. Yeah, and she's only, what was it, Delaney, getting 10% of each deal? Yeah, so yeah. if that's true across all the loans, she got about 13000 13400 Well, the big question I have, guys, is what about the people that were pretending to be the borrower? That's definitely what I was wondering, too. They don't, I don't think they went in this situation at all. I mean, they would be part of the fraud scheme. And oh, absolutely, uh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it just the, so the numbers. Did they, did they get money for coming in? I don't. I feel like they had to have been again. I don't. I don't think anybody could convince me to come do this with no. any for you fifty know. for fifty hundred um, bucks. But, no, it, it just the complexity of this transaction for such small amounts. And for serious consequences is mind boggling. Yeah, I, you know, a $10,000 authority, this begs the question. You know, you, when you give authority, lending authority to an individual, you really, as a financial institution, you really need to vet them out and make sure they're have high integrity and honesty because this kind of scheme given a certain level of lending authority, say that she had 50,000. Um, or or 250,000, which is, yeah. which is, a, I mean, Bob, is, I had a, mi I had a million dollar lending yeah, authority. Yeah, 250,000 is, is, is nothing for a, uh, for a financial services professional. Well, very good. Um, final thought, Lance Delaney. Would you like me to share some of the quotes from the jail Oh, absolutely. Calls? Oh, I'd love yeah. the best part. I, I haven't I, even I'm broken sorry. into the Don't fun please. stuff. <laughs> please. So this was not a direct quote, but there was one point where Hendrix was speaking with Miller and saying that they could blame the fraudulent loans on the people who were import or impersonating the loan recipients. Ah, okay. I like that. Um, now some quotes. This was for the second individual who got involved. Um, Miller asked, now you want one just to go in and do both or you want two, dif two different people? <laughs> uh, she responded, two different people. And all right, so it's going to be back to back. So these were for the first two people. And then the next day, Hendrix, during a call, said, OK, now do they have I'm not going to use their ID, but the camera needs to see them hand me an ID so that I can verify their identity. You know what I mean? Like, I can't they can't just walk up and then like I have. Because the camera's never seen them in front of me before. So they need to see them pass me an ID or something. And I'm just going to act like I'm using it. So she wanted them to give her a Blockbuster card. Of course, Blockbuster's not <laughs> around anymore. But, you know, hand them, hand them their insurance card or whatever and, and to fake, to impersonate a driver's license. But it's all on camera, so it's legitimate. They thought that, that was going to work. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, I guess for future reference, don't commit fraud, but also know that if you call somebody in a jail, they record all of those conversations. So. That's that's. Uh, Thank you for joining us today for Fraud <laughs> Friday, so you can stop criminals from stealing from your credit union. Have a, Have nice a good Friday. weekend.